Hear that sound? Johnny Popper round. Oh my god, I can't stop it. When you hear that sound coming. Oh my god, help me! Shh. Do you hear that sound in the distance? Uh, is that song gonna come up now? No? Okay, I'm gonna continue talking now. That is the sound of a railroader crying because they know that almost every train they operate after this locomotive you see on screen will be led by a General Electric locomotive. Hear that sound, John Popper, round and round. John oh god, it's playing again! Sound. Hello everybody and welcome to Engines of the Rio Grande, where I cover locomotives that were owned by the Denver and Rio Grande Western Railroad. In this episode, we will be talking about the EMD SD50 type locomotive. In the early 1980s, EMD got into a bit of a pickle. Although they had been in the number one diesel locomotive manufacturer spot for decades, having massacred literally every railroad's steam fleets with their E units, F units, and early Jeeps, and by the 80s having the SD45-2 and the insanely popular SD40-2, General Electric was increasing its market share with their Dash 7 line of diesels, including the C36-7, which provided some better horsepower, therefore leading railroads to not have to require nearly as many locomotives for their trains, therefore less fuel costs. This put pressure on EMD to produce a locomotive that would have higher horsepower and a better mileage than the SD45s, which although they could output 3600 horsepower, they used a 20 cylinder engine and therefore their mileage was pretty bad. After going back to the drawing board, EMD would make some changes to the 16 cylinder 645 engine and elongate the frame, creating the SD50, a locomotive intended to compete with the GE's Dash 7 line of diesels. And surely this would be another W for EMD, right? Railroaders love EMD locomotives, and therefore the locomotives would be good, right? Right? Hello? Hello? Bonjour? Is anyone listening to me? Unfortunately, despite Cruz finding the comfort in the SD50s to be good, that's kinda it of good qualities. And remember the some changes bit? I said, here's a small clip of the Rocket City Railfan aka Andrews video on the SD50 of the changes EMD made to their engine for the SD50. As for the engine, the SC50 was fitted with an updated version of the 645 engine used in the SC40-2, but this time it was revved from 900 RPM and 3000 horsepower seen in the SD40-2 to 950 RPM to achieve 3500 horsepower and later 3600. This was an unbelievably horrible blunder and the core of what turned the SC50 from the true successor to the legendary SD40-2 to one of the most infamous topics in railroad and railway history. And why? Well, think about it this way. EMD had essentially just made a newer version of the 645 E3 V16 engine, which in the SD50 was a 645 F3B V16, and just charged it to 3500 HP without making any adjustments to the engine's dimensions, like the cylinder board, the size, none of that. Granted, the B36-7 and C36-7 also used 16 cylinder 3600 horsepower engines, but those were actually meant to operate at that power, as in being designed for it. The 645 V16 engines 
we're not meant to operate at that power, let alone anything beyond 3,000 horsepower. And I literally mean the entire subfamily of 645 V16 engines. I could keep going, but the original video is in the description, so I highly encourage you guys to watch the original video and support Andrew's channel. Also, when's the next Garbage on the Rails episode? It's already been two years. As a result of putting the same engine on a slightly longer frame, and pushing that very same engine to the very limit of its capabilities, the SD50s were prone to crankshaft failures, power assembly failures, crankshaft failures, engine block failures, crankshaft failures, problems with the locomotive's internal electricals due to over complications, and oh, did I forget to mention crankshaft failures? Fortunately for EMD and anyone who was still heavily EMD loyal, the SD50 was a transitional locomotive as only a year after the SD50 was put on EMD's catalog, they shafted the SD50 for the SD60, which had increased horsepower with better fuel mileage thanks to the new EMD710 engine, and unlike the predecessor, it was very reliable. Unfortunately, the SD50 would have major damage to the EMD brand, and while the SD60s and pre-ACE SD70s still did decent numbers against GE's Dash 9s and AC4400 CWs, EMD would never recover, and would consistently fall short whether it came to horsepower, reliability, or in the F69PHAC's case, not fitting in all of Amtrak's tunnels. EMD would fall short over and over and over again. Although many see the SD50 as the immediate deal breaker, in my opinion, the SD50 was just the first knockout punch that pushed EMD back to number 2, and in my opinion, it was the SD90 Mac that permanently totaled EMD's reputation for railroads, since the SD60s and pre-ACE SD70s still did decent numbers against GE's Dash 9s and AC4400 CWs. Yet, the aces fall way short of the Evolution series. At this point, you may be asking yourself, where does the SD50 fit into the Rio Grande? Well... By 1980, all 73 of the Rio Grande's SD40 T-2 tunnel motors were delivered to the Rio Grande, but the Rio Grande wanted to order some more tunnel motors. However, when they went to EMD to ask for more tunnel motors, EMD would insist to the Rio Grande that they should purchase the SD50. They claimed the added horsepower and the traction slip control would mean the Rio Grande wouldn't have to spend as much on some SD50s as they would with buying more tunnel motors. To prove EMD's case, the SD50s were evaluated by the Rio Grande, and an order would be placed for 17 units, which were delivered in 1984. Before arriving on the Rio Grande though, these 17 units would go to a private contractor in Kansas City in order for the SD50s to be brought up to the Rio Grande standards. Although a lot of the changes were internal, probably because of all those SD50 issues mentioned earlier, the most noticeable external change was the installation of a gyro light in the nose of the SD50s. The SD50s would make their first runs on the Rio Grande on September 22nd, 1984, on train 712, a cold train, I think. And an interesting note is that the SD50s were for some reason named the Super Series. Not sure if it's because they had the most horsepower of any diesel the Rio Grande owned, but that's a real fact. By October of 1984, all 17 of the SD50s that the Rio Grande ordered, 16 full service and one spare, had already been delivered and were in service. And although initial reactions were positive, the units still received traction motor problems, with the Rio Grande having to replace at least four motors at the Burnham shops by October of 1984. Either way, these locomotives were initially assigned to coal trains along the Moffat line, but the traction motor issues, not the charged past the limit engine even though that was also an issue, and the fact that the SD50s weren't very good at hauling trains up primarily steep grades, resulted in them being sent to the flatter areas of the Rio Grande system, such as the joint line, 
while the tunnel motors remained in mountain surface. Also, remember how I said the Rio Grande evaluated the SD-50? Well, they found out that the SD-50s couldn't haul that much more than the SD-40T-2s. In other words, four SD-50s couldn't replace five tunnel motors. Man, talk about false advertising. Weirdly enough, though, despite the SD-50's problems, the Rio Grande was never forced into such a corner with the SD-50's that they were forced to purchase Dash 8's, nor did they bother purchasing the SD-60's. I don't know why, but it could be because they didn't have the traffic to justify new locomotives. In fact, the SD-50's would be the last diesels ordered by the Rio Grande before the Southern Pacific buyout. Either way, out of all the railroads that own the SD-50s, from what I've heard from some train orders forums, the Rio Grande actually seemed to like the SD-50s the most out of all the railroads that owned SD-50s. In addition, the Rio Grande seemed to have just maintained their locomotives pretty well and made the best of what they had at the time. Hence the most likely reason why they never bothered purchasing additional locomotives, whether that be from EMD or GE. When the SP Rio Grande merger occurred, the SD-50s were transferred to the Southern Pacific and continued working across the SP system from there, and some of the SD-50s were repainted into the Southern Pacific speed lettering scheme, those being 5504, 5510, 5511, 5513, 5514, 5516, and 5517. After the SPUP merger, the SD-50s continued working for the Union Pacific for a couple of years, until being retired from the UP in 2007. According to various photos and forum posts, the SD-50s were sold to Progress Rail. 5501 through 5506 are believed to be scrapped as there is no further information regarding them. 5507 eventually became 9851 and then sold to the Southwestern Railroad, only to be involved in an accident in Roswell, New Mexico in 2015. Although all the other locomotives were eventually repaired and put back into service, 9851 was the only one that wasn't repaired and was later scrapped. 5508 through 5515 are also believed to be scrapped as no other info or photos appear for these units after the late 2000s. 5516 after being repainted into SP colors for some reason just vanishes from existence after 1994. And 5517, which later became UP9861 before making it to the Cimarron Valley Railroad, was then likely sold to Atterbury Grain in Saginaw, Texas. 9861 may as well be the only surviving SD-50 from the Rio Grande. If anyone knows of any additional info about the other SD-50s, and whether any other Rio Grande SD-50s were sold off to other railroads after serving the Union Pacific, please let me know. Moving on to technical specifications, the SD-50s were powered by an EMD 645F3B 16-cylinder engine, which had a horsepower rating of 3500 horsepower, although later it would be increased to 3600 in November of 1984, and an RPM of 950. They rode on HTC trucks, had a length of 68 feet 10 inches, and a height of 15 feet 7 inches, with a width of 10 feet 3 inches. They weighed in at 368,000 pounds, had a fuel capacity of 3,500 gallons, a top speed of 65 miles per hour, a starting tractive effort of 92,000 pounds, and a continuous tractive effort of 82,100 pounds. The SD-50s were equipped with Nathan K5LA air horns, although I did find one example that may have had a different air horn from a K5LA. Here are a few samples.
As for the name, the SD stands for Special Duty, and the 50 stands for the Model Series. Despite the fact that the SD-50s do not have the best reputation, let alone the best performance for railroads that ever owned the SD-50s, for the DNRGW, they will still be a small but important part of the history of the Denver and Rio Grande Western. The main line through the Rockies. Thank you for watching this video, and I would also like to shout out CDTX2052 and Ashton Studio Productions for creating the thumbnail for this video. And also, I still recommend watching the Rocket City Railfan aka Andrew's Garbage on the Rails video about the SD50s. Although I am not 100% sure on what locomotives to cover next, I am thinking about lumping the 3000 series Jeeps into a single video the GP9s would be separate, or talking about the SD45s. I will put out a poll soon so that you guys can vote on which one should be next. Thank you all for watching, and until next time, sparkle sparkle sparkle. sparkle. Oh yeah. Have a good day, y'all.